Good evening. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight um, to our online information session for the Northwestern University Office of Undergraduate Admission. My name is Fritz Berger. I'm an Assistant Director of Admission at Northwestern, and it's my pleasure to be speaking with you this evening, um, whether you're on the East Coast, Central, Mountain Time, West Coast, or joining us from across the world. We really appreciate you tuning in um, to learn a little bit about Northwestern University and also about our admissions process. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm an assistant director. I've been in the office for um, coming up on five years now, um, but I'm also a graduate of the university, proud uh, Medill alum I, where I pursued uh, journalism and also received a minor in political science and also received um, our certificate in integrated marketing communication. Uh, that's a little about myself. I'm gonna let my counterpart introduce herself um, before diving into all the fun for the next hour. Hi everyone, my name is Sydney Stelzer and I can now proudly say that I am a recent graduate of Northwestern as of this past weekend. Um, I studied mechanical engineering and I had a certific certificate in design. And outside of the classroom, I played ultimate Frisbee and I was a member of our formula racing team, which builds a race car. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sydney, uh, for that quick introduction. So to give everyone a little frame, work of what we're going to be doing this evening. We're going to try and keep this program to about an hour um, and we're going to really try and focus the main presentation portion to the first 40 minutes and then try to answer a ton of your questions in the remaining time at the end. So throughout the presentation today, feel free to use that chat box there on the side here on YouTube and start submitting your questions and we'll try to get to as many of those as we can um, during this hour tonight. Um, but beyond that, we also just want you to sit back, relax and learn a little bit about Northwestern. Um, so before diving into all that, I just want to take a brief moment um, and recognize the uncertain times that we're in and particularly for those of you who may just be wrapping up your junior year or have your sights set on your senior year of high school know that we are here to listen and we are really really invested in making sure that this process is as manageable for you as possible obviously doing an online information session is not the same as doing an inform information session on campus in person um, and being able to do the traditional tour on campus interacting with current undergraduate students we recognize that and we're really trying to come up with a lot of virtual programming opportunities for you to interact with students but beyond that know that as we go through um, the admissions process in the coming months we are really here to support you answer your questions address your concerns with the information that we have at that time um, so do not hesitate in reaching out to our office at any point here in the coming months and the coming weeks with your questions, with your concerns, and we'll really do our best um, to provide you with the information that we can um, in the timeline that best suits us all, um, given these uncertain, um, uh, this uncertain situation that we're all in with this pandemic, all right? But with that all in mind, I really wanna emphasize um, that with the college admissions process, there's one piece that I think everyone should really prioritize, and that's the people, all right? In normal times, you'd be able to visit campus, interact with current students, potentially with faculty and other staff members around campus. Wherever you go, let the people drive the decision behind where you decide to attend, all right? Obviously, you can't meet people in person, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities here in the coming months for you to engage with admission offices, with students in college, with professors, with staff members at different colleges and universities, and really think about what do those relationships look like? How do you feel with those? Because ultimately, it's going to be the people and not the place that will define your college experience. So don't let prestige, rank, any of that stuff be the driving force in this process for you. 
You know, really think about what type of people you want to surround yourself with. Who's going to push you um, maybe in ways that you haven't been pushed before? Who's going to open your eyes to seeing different perspectives that maybe you haven't thought about before? Lord knows I came from a 40 person village in rural eastern Iowa and coming to Northwestern was quite an eye opening experience. But from the moment that I moved into my residential hall there my freshman year, I was striking up conversation with folks from Arkansas, California, Serbia, China, India, Texas, everywhere in between. And it was really those conversations that shaped my four years at Northwestern. And ultimately, you'll have similar conversations with people wherever you end up going to school. And those people will serve to be your friends, your mentors, and really the colleagues that will support you throughout your time in college and beyond. So I always like to address that right off the bat. So with that all in mind, let's talk a little bit more specifically about Northwestern. All right. If there's one piece of information I want you to understand about Northwestern, it's our commitment to an interdisciplinary and flexible curriculum. At Northwestern, we released a slogan a couple years ago that says, and is in our DNA. While it's a very corny palindrome, I'll be the first to admit, it does speak to the student experience at Northwestern because the vast majority of our students are pursuing multiple fields of study or able to pursue a field of study and then participate in a different part of the student experience, whether it be in a club, volunteering, professional organizations, you name it, all right? We want you to be able to pursue a variety of different passions during your four years at Northwestern. To make that possible, we have six undergraduate colleges that make up the undergraduate experience. The largest of them is the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences that houses our different humanities, social science, and natural science disciplines. We have the McCormick School of Engineering that's home to our different engineering majors and different, a uh, lot of pre-professional programs within the College of Engineering. We have the School of Communication that's produced some of our most famous alums, folks like Heather Headley of Broadway fame, uh, Seth Myers and Stephen Colbert of Late Night Television all got their start at the School of Communication. The Medill School of Journalism produces countless Pulitzer Prize winning reporters and marketers who are shaping how we consume media in the 21st century. We also have the Bean and School of Music, which is our conservatory on campus. And then we also have the School of Education and Social Policy that's designed to support students who want to make an impact in the classroom or in an organization or the broader world. If you decide to apply to Northwestern, you're going to be asked to submit your application and indicate which one of those schools you want to attend and potentially a specific major. Now, just because you decide to apply directly um, to the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences to pursue math does not mean you're gonna get boxed in to math during your four years at Northwestern. If anything, we're gonna push you to take courses from across all six schools. You're gonna have ample opportunity to switch majors, um, whether it's within the, that same school or across schools or even double major across the six schools because ultimately we want you to be able to have that flexibility and get that interdisciplinary education that you desire during your time at Northwestern. I'm going to let Sydney talk a little bit about what that actually looks like um, in real terms. Yeah, so like Fritz was saying, there are just so many opportunities in, to engage with whatever it might be that excites you about Northwestern. Although my main studies were in McCormick School of Engineering, Northwestern really gave me flexibility to allow me to take classes in four out of six of our schools. I took courses in painting, performance studies, geography, and just things that I was interested in, or even things that my friends wanted to take that I never really thought about before. And I had really awesome experiences in all of these. And um, my schedules really allowed me to explore this. Um, this kind of interdisciplinary work is super common and we can even build it into our schedule with theme and distribution requirements. Each year, there are over 100 classes that count towards these requirements, so you can really um, explore what you want to do, and you're not sort of boxed in. Like, if you couldn't sit through English or math in high school, you never really have to take them again. But if you did love those courses, you can definitely explore that further, which I think is really awesome. Um, some of our most loved courses are uh, things like Intro to Buddhism or Russian Literature, which are topics that no one really hears about until they get to Northwestern and hear everyone talking about how great those teachers are um, and how like awesome it is to like learn about like something different, some religion or culture like you've never gotten a chance to learn about before. And Northwestern has all kinds of opportunities like that. 
But while I just finished my last year, all of you are just going to be beginning, which is so exciting. Um, and so whatever you may be interested in, Northwestern will help you through your unique learning journey. Um, and some of you might know exactly what you want to study. For example, my friend Lawrence is a computer science and um, physics major, and he's super passionate about aerospace. He came into Northwestern already knowing exactly what he wanted to do and even started an aerospace club on campus. He's had internships at NASA and SpaceX um, and is super excited to be working for Boeing next year. So he came to Northwestern and it helped him follow his passion and meet all these people that got into these really cool places. Um, but not everyone has that experience. Some students come in really unsure about what they want to study. In fact, 50% of our incoming first years are undecided. Uh, I came in as an undecided engineering major, and at first I thought I wanted to do biomedical engineering, and then I realized I did not want to do biomedical engineering. Bio biology and chemistry and all of that wasn't for me, and so I wanted to explore my other options. Um, I like certain engineering courses, but not others. And the flexibility in our schedules really, um, and Northwestern's commitment to like helping each student through their own academic journey allowed me to create my own major and kind of explore that area of engineering and design and creative thinking. Um, but yeah, so that was all really great. And I'm going to hand it back to Fritz to talk about our next topic. Perfect. So I think one of the really phenomenal ways um, that our students are able to really um, explore and get um, that academic path figured out is because we operate on the quarter system. All right. Um, so most of you are probably familiar with semesters at most colleges and universities where there's two academic terms and you're going to typically take anywhere from four to six classes per semester. And Northwestern, we operate a little differently. All right, we have four academic terms. Students are able to take classes, a fall, winter, spring, and summer term. Each is about 10 weeks, but most students do not go to school during the summer. They're usually off doing an internship. Maybe they're going abroad. Maybe they're just crashing at home and couch. It's really up to you. But those other three quarters, you're gonna end up taking four classes. So over the course of your four years at Northwestern, most students end up taking 20% more classes um, than they would at a traditional semester-based institution. And that's what really allows a lot of flexibility and a variety of different opportunities to take classes that they otherwise may not have been interested in. You know, um, I know from my own experience, to Sydney's point earlier, I took Introduction to Russian Literature. I didn't even know Russian Literature was a subject uh, before coming to Northwestern, but in that class ended up being one of the most influential classes I took during my college career. We want you to be able to have those experiences um, in college. Obviously, we want you, you know, make sure that you can dive in, get a deep, um, fulfilling experience in your um, primary area of focus, if you know what that is. But we also want to make sure you have that exploration, that time to figure out what it is that you're really passionate about, what you want to really explore and what you think you can maybe take and pursue long after you leave Northwestern, all right? Um, beyond that, um, we also wanna make sure that with the quarter system, we're giving you ample time to take that deep dive, get a liberal arts education and explore, all right? So at Northwestern, all the classes you take are gonna fall into one of three buckets, okay? You're gonna have classes that are considered major requirements, and you're gonna have classes that are gonna be considered distribution requirements, and you're gonna have classes that are gonna be considered electives, all right? So major requirements are gonna be probably 11 to 17 classes um, out of typically the 48 classes that you'll take um, that will be within your specific major department, all right? Then you're gonna have your distribution requirements, which is essentially our liberal arts curriculum. So that being said, there's not going to be one class that every Northwestern student takes. We're gonna have broad academic themes like a STEM component or a humanities component where you'll be expected to take three to five um, classes in that genre of academia. And you'll have a list of 30 to 50 classes to choose from. So you'll have plenty of opportunity to still select the classes, but we will try to push you to explore and maybe try classes outside your natural comfort zone. And then the last third of classes that you'll take will be electives, where you can easily fill those by taking more classes in your primary field of study, so within your major department, or you can add a double major or certificate programs, or just take random classes that you're genuinely interested in. 
Um, there's really a lot of opportunities um, to take classes like that, whether you come in with AP credit, dual enrollment credit, um, IB credit, any of that stuff, you don't need to sweat because as someone that came in with no college credit, I took countless um, random classes, had multiple internships during the school year and was still able to graduate on time thanks to this flexibility that we offer at Northwestern. And one of the really valuable ways that we do that um, is thanks to the fact that our faculty really support us um, and really um, are there to help kind of figure out um, you figure out how they can um, best direct you um, as you figure out what your passions and your academic goals are. So I'm going to let Sydney talk a little bit about the faculty relationship real quick. Yeah, um, one of my favorite things to talk about at Northwestern is our supportive faculty and advisors. Um, I talked a little bit about before about my academic journey um, and it sort of started my sophomore year when I scheduled a meeting with my future mentor, um, David Gatchel. He helped me a very like frantic, discombobulated student with a bunch of interests explore my options and introduced me and coached me through this idea of making a major or like exploring subjects that weren't really presented to me. Um, he's a professor and advisor, an incredible design engineer, and he still made time whenever I needed to talk about design, help me for my search and internships, and remember to ask me about all my extracurriculars. Um, that's what's so fantastic about the Northwestern faculty. And as a Northwestern student, you have access not only to professors, but TAs who help you navigate those few large classes on campus, um, a first year advisor and advisors for every single major or minor you pick up. Uh, we have a six to one student to professor ratio and 80% of our classes have less than 20 students. So you can really foster these close relationships like I had with my mentor and build your support system at Northwestern. Um, one of the things that uh, my advisor helped me explore were opportunities in research here, uh, which definitely come in a bunch of different forms for undergraduates. The school allocates $3.5 million to undergraduate research alone, so it's really, really easy to find opportunities on this campus. Um, this also means research looks different for everyone, and it doesn't have to just be chemistry and biology and test tubes. For example, my friend Simone, she works in a neurobiology lab, um, and she's not a neurobiology major, she just wanted to work with fish. And so she works with, it's something to do with like fluorescent proteins and zebra fish um, and how it translates to helping with spinal regeneration. And it's really applicable to like Parkinson's research and epilepsy. And then on the other end of the spectrum, my friend Tony received an undergraduate research grant to work in a computer science lab with one of his favorite prof professors. And he was coding neural networks and other buzzwords in computer science, but I know that was a really um, awesome opportunity that he found through our Office of Undergraduate Research, uh, who helps you find opportunities available and support you with resources to get involved in those things. And some people even take their research abroad. My friend Daniel did research in Ecuador studying the habitats of leafcutter ants. Um, he lived in a rainforest and got to study while he was in his program abroad, um, but a lot of students will add global learning to their Northwestern experience, including and beyond traditional study abroad. Um, Northwestern offers students opportunities all across the globe. We have, I know, over 150 affiliated programs. And if you find a program you love that isn't affiliated, Northwestern will help you find a way there through our global learning office. I'm a big worry about tra traveling abroad is expense, but Northwestern, we had a Northwestern, your financial aid travels with you. Um, study abroad allows you so many incredible experiences and Northwestern wants to help you do those. Um, my friend Steph studied in New Zealand right before all this craziness happened, and the classes that she took there will come back and count as credits towards her major. Um, with anything that you do, you can um, help talk, help with your advisors, talk to your advisors about having those credits count and bringing them back so you're not um, studying random things and not having it count towards your degree. Um, she was also to get able to get an internship there. Um, which unfortunately didn't happen because of what's happening now. But there are really, really aw awesome opportunities all over the globe through Northwesterns. And while some, while some people go all the way to New Zealand to find internships, most of them stay here in the U.S. and take advantage of the many, many opportunities here in Chicago. Um, and Northwestern, along with study abroad, along with research, has so many more research resources for finding internships. The Northwestern Career Advancement Center hosts biannual career fairs, um, I know they do practice interviews and resume building workshops, um, and they have, it's called the Summer Internship Grant Program, which allows students to take unpaid internships over the summer 
So if you're in a field that traditionally doesn't pay interns, um, they'll give you a stipend and a grant to allow you to do this thing that you're really excited about um, and still get paid for it. Another really amazing program that we have is called Chicago Field Studies that I uh, took part in this past winter. Uh, it's called, or it's acronym is CFS and it connects students with hundreds of internships during the school year across Evanston and Chicago. Um, I worked at the Design Museum of Chicago, so I would commute downtown and I helped them with design and different like just logistical organizations and it was really cool to get to see um, how a Chicago organization works and be able to give back to my community by planning events for them. Um, and while students like me might take an off-season internship and get course credit through CFS, many students will pursue internships over the summer, which is very traditional. Um, I have friends like Lawrence who worked at SpaceX, a friend like Rafa who was in San Francisco working for Lyft, um, and she received a, a return offer to go back and work after she graduates. Um, and she's one of these amazing connections uh, that I have to internships of people that I've met here. And I wouldn't be able to be connected to people like Rafa or other alumni across the world without our world-class alumni network, which I'll let Fritz talk about. Absolutely. I'll gladly talk about that as I welcome you to the alumni network, Sydney. Um, the Purple Mafia, as we dub ourselves, are everywhere. And we're really, really invested um, in supporting our fellow Wildcats, um, whether they've been out, they've been far from Evanston for decades, or they're just taking their foot first step off campus in four years. Um, I can't tell you the number of classmates I had that got their first job thanks to a Northwestern connection. The alumni chapters scattered across the country and around the globe are really phenomenal resources in learning to navigate new cities, in providing mentorship in your first job, and really, you know, finding a way to constantly give back to the undergraduate students. Um, I, there's tons of activities during the school year where alums will come back, maybe they'll do panel discussions, maybe they'll invite um, current students over for dinner as part of our Dinner with 12 Strangers program through the alumni office. There's a lot of ways to engage with alumni and they, I think, are really a, a really big part of the undergraduate experience in making it so special. You know, being able to see so many come back um, every weekend in the fall where there's a home football game, having those opportunities to network um, at career fairs or um, to have those special roundtable discussions, um, whether it's in the residential hall or affiliated with the school or your academic program. Northwestern alums are there to serve, support, advise, help, and just get to know um, the current undergraduate body because as an alum, you always want to know what's the latest news on campus, what's um, happening, where students' minds are, and stay connected to a place that we all really care very deeply about. So with that, we're going to take a brief pause from talking about kind of the heavier academic stuff, um, and I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to tackle one of these questions that we received already here from uh, Valentina. All right, thanks for submitting this. Um, so Sydney, this one I'm gonna direct right to you as the most recent student here. Um, how do you feel students um, feel about the quarter system? Do they think, you know, like 10 weeks are sufficient to truly engage with a course and absorb the concepts completely? Or does it feel like it's only gonna be a surface level given the speed of the time of a quarter? Yeah, um, I think when I'm talking to prospective students, this comes up a lot, these questions about the quarter system. And I think another conception, just to address something that's probably been put in the chat, is that with the quarter system, you're condensing what would be a semester of work just into a quarter, which could potentially add pressure on students. Um, and my experience with the quarter system is that, yes, first of all, it is definitely enough time to dive in depth to topics. I'll tell you thermodynamics. Don't know if I wanted to know that much about it. And 10 weeks definitely gave enough to learn everything that I could ever want to know about it. Um, and there's more. Some people want to learn more. So there's thermodynamics too, if you're interested in that. But I think what Northwestern does that's really great is they don't try to cram everything into one quarter and they don't skip over things if it can't fit in one quarter. For example, our introductory chemistry sequence is the same as at any state school or at any um, other semester school that they do. Um, two semesters of 
chemistry and here we'll just do three quarters. So in my opinion, it's a little more like manageable, like easier to bite off. Like, like you'll only do, you'll do 10 weeks. So you'll have three different periods where you get to learn that thing rather than having to do a like massive test after 16 whole weeks of information. So I think that would be my favorite thing about the quarter system. Um, and I will say that uh, it's not a light load by any means. It doesn't lighten it, but you'll get to everything you want and they'll split different classes up. Um, I had like a manufacturing class that was two parts. And so like the first one led off into the second one. So you definitely have courses that you can build off of. But if it's like a one course class, you're not missing anything from it. So uh, the other ma massive benefit is that you get to take more classes. Like if you don't want to take thermodynamics too, you don't have to. And if you do want to take a further Spanish or literature class, you definitely have that opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sydney, um, for that response there. Yeah, echo everything that she said with that one. I think she hit the nail on the head. Um, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and transition now um, into more of the social experience because college is more than just academics. Um, so with that, I'm gonna let actually Sydney um, take the baton and talk about what it's like to be a student and how we really strive to form community at Northwestern. Yeah, thank you, Fritz. Um, my favorite thing, and I think any student that you ask will tell you that their favorite thing about Northwestern is the people. Um, the best thing about it is that every person at Northwestern is has unique interests and unique identities that really add to the di diversity of thought on campus. Um, it's really amazing to see these different kinds of people all come together and form the Northwestern community. And the one thing that I always say is that no Northwestern student is exactly the same, but what brings us together is how passionate we are about the things that we love. Um, you can really start to see this community come together just built on passion, even though it's like all different kinds of passions. And this community really starts the first minute that you walk onto campus, and that's during Wildcat Welcome. Wildcat Welcome is our week-long introduction for first year and transfer students to Northwestern. Um, you're put into a group of 10 to 12 students with one act upperclassmen called your peer advisor. Um, I was actually a peer advisor, so that was a really great experience for me. And this advisor helps you and your group um, learn about campus and how to get to buildings, how to pick your classes, um, just how to navigate being a Northwestern student. And it really sets the tone of on campus of like this community of support. Uh, we do really fun things during this week. Uh, I know class of 2021, Got to go see the musical Hamilton for free. I was class of 2020, so I felt a little slighted, but it's fine. Um, we got to do really awesome things too, including um, this annual trip to Six Flags that freshmen get to go to. Um, and every year we uh, they rent out Six Flags for us. It's really awesome. You get to run across Ryan Field before the football game during the annual Wildcat Dash. But that's not the only place students find their community. Um, a lot of people find it through their residential experience. Um, I lived in a rental, residential college for two years and it was an incredible opportunity and um, taking like being I, to graduation like this past year, I like was recognizing how many of those people who lived in my res college my freshman year were still in my life and how meaningful they were to me. Um, we do have a two year live on requirement, uh, but it's, I don't know. I think it's like I said, like a really great way to have uh, sense of community there. Um, people also find community in many of our significant identity spaces here on campus. Uh, my freshman year roommate was really involved in Hillel, which is the Jewish center on campus, and it really allowed her to stay connected to one of her identities that she felt strongly attached to at home while she was in college. People also find that in the Multicultural Center, the Black House, the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, just to name a few. But no matter where you find your space, we all come together through various campus traditions. My favorite is Armadillo or Dillo Day. Um, it's a student organized campus concert. Uh, and it's every year or should have been every year in early June. Um, we've hosted artists like Chance the Rapper, Anderson Pock, MGMT, Charlie XCX. Uh, it's making me sad to see this. Um, we had a virtual Dillo this year with really awesome artists as well. So it's really cool to see what people can like the creativity at Northwestern and how we can stay engaged even if we're not all together. Um, it's the largest student run festival in the entire nation and the president of our school Morty even says that it's the one day libraries are completely empty on campus. Um, he closes them and we all have a really awesome day. Uh, this year it was actually sunny, which is funny. The past couple of years it's rained a bunch. So we were all like, oh great. 
Um, but it's just one way that students here balance their experiences in and out of the classroom. Um, in fact, Dillo Day is put on by Mayfest, which is one of our 500 plus student organizations on campus. Um, with that many student organizations, it's another fantastic opportunity to really find your people on this campus and do something that you're passionate about outside of the classroom. We have athletic orgs, which are broken into varsity, club, and intramural. Um, like I said before, I compete on our, or competed on our women's ultimate team um, and play intramural soccer in the spring. So with my club team, we traveled around the country this year. I went to Santa Barbara. We went down to Texas and it's a really great community. Um, I live with a lot of my teammates. And so that's been my experience. Um, there are also plenty of things that I'm not involved in, but there are arts and publication or organizations. We have a student newspaper called the Daily Northwestern. We have dance groups, free professional groups, and 15 acapella groups, which is a lot. Uh, but there's plenty to do around campus with our all of our clubs. And if you're not satisfied in one of these many, many clubs, um, you can grab your friends and ask the school to start in. One, freshman year, my, uh, my engineering friend Peter wanted a low commitment way to play an instrument and just like sing with his friends. So he started a ukulele club. Um, and they would do this like once a quarter jam session on the lake bill, which is this beautiful part of campus, uh, right on the lake. Uh, and they would have a bonfire and sing and I can't play any instruments, but, um, I like to go and just like enjoy what he enjoys. And they even got invited to play in Chicago. And I was like, that's really awesome. But, um, a lot of student organizations have the opportunity that they do because of our incredible location and our closeness to Chicago. Um, and I know somebody asked about like life in Evanston versus Chicago. Um, and Chicago is an absolutely amazing city. Um, I love going down there, especially like when they decorate for the holidays or just to explore different neighborhoods, um, delicious food. Uh, and in comparison to Evanston, Evanston was named, I think, the food capital of uh, the North Shore. Yeah. And so that's always a plus. Um, getting takeout here, always great. Uh, going downtown Evanston, always beautiful. They have these areas that you can like uh, sit in these squares with like pretty like little lights hanging over them. So it's always really nice in the spring and summer, uh, the best weather here in Evanston. Don't think about the other times, but we, we have like a lot to do here and people do like, I know there's like performance centers and all those like, and so people will play music and people go down to see their friends play music. Um, and so it's definitely a really good balance of um, kind of a quieter outside the city life, but also getting to engage in such an amazing, culturally rich city um, whenever we want to. So I'm going to hand it back to Fritz. Perfect. Yeah, just to echo what Sydney was saying there, um, having Northwestern's location, I think, really amplifies the education that all of our students are able to receive. As I mentioned earlier, coming from a very provincial community um, prior to Northwestern, um, having the city of Chicago and Evanston right there for me to explore, learn, um, apply what I've been uh, seeing in the classroom and interacting with people so different than those that I grew up with um, really was a world-class education in and of itself. Um, I really can't emphasize just how valuable being in a large metropolitan city like Chicago can be for college students because obviously you're getting world-class faculty and getting great classes, great books you're reading, whether you like them at 2 a.m. cramming for that midterm or not is beside the point. Um, but then actually being able to go out, interact with people from a variety of cultures, um, getting those authentic cuisines, being able to check out a bunch of different um, festivals around the city during different times of the year, um, I think is something really powerful and is really um, a fantastic supplemental piece to the Northwestern education. So with that all, we're gonna transition into the last bit here, talking about the admissions and financial aid uh, process at Northwestern. So we'll try and keep this quick and to the point so we can get to as many of your questions here with the remaining hour. Um, but yeah, so first and foremost, um, Northwestern has a holistic admissions process. And you can read more on our um, admissions blog um, in a post from our director, Liz Kinsley, um, who talked about what holistic means. But essentially, the way I like to always say it is 
there is no one piece that is going to make or break your application to any college or university. It's going to be the sum of your parts. It's going to be all those different factors um, that make you you and what you bring to the table um, that will ultimately decide whether we decide to admit you or not. And most importantly, students, please know that it is not about who is the most qualified in this process. When you're looking at schools like Northwestern's that are considered highly selective, there are countless qualified students. All right. At the end of the day, though, we don't want a campus of just journalism majors or just engineers or just theater majors or just econ majors. We want students of all different academic passions, all different um, lived experiences, all different backgrounds um, to create this dynamic campus um, that we have at Northwestern. All right. Um, so with any admission letter that you receive here in the next year, do not let any admit letter boost your ego or any rejection letter diminish your self-worth. That is not what this process is about, all right? As long as you work hard, work well with others, and take advantage of new opportunities that come across your path, you're going to be successful. I can guarantee it, all right? So specifically about the Northwestern admissions process, when we are evaluating students, we're going to look at you within your own educational environment. What opportunities have you been afforded? And how did you take advantage of those opportunities? What I mean by that, to put it plainly, is when we receive an application, we're gonna get your grades, we're gonna get extracurricular activities, we're gonna get letters of recommendations, but your counselor is also going to send us something called a school profile. And that's gonna outline all the classes offered, extracurricular opportunities, makeup of the student body, give us a good idea of where you're coming from, all right? And that's gonna inform us about what opportunities you've had at your disposal. Um, and that's gonna kind of inform us throughout evaluating your application. So we're going to require a high school transcript. And this year, we're expecting to see a lot of pass fail grades. So don't stress about those, particularly here this sixth semester there in your junior year. You're not going to be alone. This is something that's happening across the board. So our staff will be well equipped to review those applications here in the coming months. All right. This year, we will be going test optional. So you will not be required to take the SAT or ACT to apply to Northwestern. Again, I encourage you to check out um, our director, Liz Kinsley, also recently posted um, on our blog about that decision. Um, so you can learn more about what test optional means there. It means optional, all right? Do not read into it as much as I think some folks get stressed about that language. Um, we're also gonna ask though this year for extracurricular involvement as we always have. We're gonna ask for two letters of recommendation. One typically is from a counselor. Another one is usually from a teacher. That's kind of the norm. If you wanna apply, uh, if you wanna submit additional letters of recommendation, you certainly can. Don't feel you need to, but maybe there's another teacher that you feel really can speak about you in a different way than those first two can, that's more than okay. Maybe there's someone outside of the school setting you want to have right on your behalf. That's perfectly fine as well. We just ask you don't submit three letters of recommendation from three different math teachers to show us you're really good at math. I'll get it after the first one, I promise. Um, lastly, then, we're going to ask for two essays. All right, one will be the personal statement that's built into either the common application or the coalition application. We take either type at Northwestern. Um, it's a six, 700 word essay. I think there's like nine or 10 prompts that you can choose from. Um, so you can write about pretty much anything. When writing the personal statement students, my best piece of advice is to not worry as much about what you choose to write about. Instead, focus on how you're writing it. When we are evaluating personal statements, we're not really evaluating or judging the content that you're putting forward as much as we are your ability to communicate, all right? What does your essay's organization look like? How does your voice come through in the essay? What type of vocabulary? What is your word choice? All those types of uh, tangible things is what we're really looking at in the personal statement. So don't feel you need to summarize all that you are into six or 700 words. That's an impossible task and that's not what we're asking you to do. So my 
So in addition to, you know, thinking about how you communicate, keep it focused, all right? The second essay that we're gonna ask at Northwestern is strictly for us. And it asks, why do you want to attend Northwestern University? It's a very common essay prompt. A lot of art, a lot of schools like Northwestern ask this question. Anytime a school asks this question, we all want the same thing, substantive detail. What specifically about our university, our colleges is appealing to you? A lot of students make the mistake and just end up writing an essay where they try and just copy and paste it across a bunch of schools. And maybe they'll write pretty broadly about being near a metropolitan area or having a large body of water right on campus there or having a specific major. Those things can be true, but they aren't necessarily what make Northwestern really that special. Do your homework. What is actually compelling you to apply to Northwestern? Is there a class you're really excited to take? Um, like, oh gosh, um, like I said earlier, Introduction to Russian Literature, um, one of the most popular course at Northwestern. Uh, maybe there's a student group you really wanna be a part of, like the Trash Talking Chess Club or the Happiness Club that brings puppies and Shetland ponies to campus during the terms and final season. Maybe there's a professor you wanna conduct research with like Sir Fraser Stoddard, who won a Nobel Prize in chemistry and has undergraduates working in his lab. It's those kind of details that we're looking for in that essay to show us you've done your homework and you have a clear understanding of how you'll fit into our campus community. All right. Again, it's going to be the sum of all those different parts that's going to drive your decision. And once again, no, it is not about being qualified. All right. I can't stress that enough. At Northwestern, there's going to be two ways um, to apply. We have an early decision process and a regular decision process. OK, early decision is going to be designed for students who have a clear cut number one school, and that is Northwestern. Early decision is a binding application process where if you apply and are admitted, you will be required to withdraw all other outstanding applications and you will be expected to attend that institution. As I mentioned, it's a, pro it's a process that's really designed for students who have a clear cut number one school. If Northwestern's on your list, but it's not necessarily standing out, I would encourage you to apply via regular decision, where you'll be able to apply to a variety of schools, hear back from all of them, compare your offers, and make the decision um, that at that point feels best for you. Now, in recent years, thanks to largely the Common App making it easier to apply to more schools than ever before, it's become more challenging for schools like Northwestern to figure who really wants to get in and who just wants to see if they can get in. So because of that, we decided to start taking half of the incoming class in early decision. That doesn't mean that it's easier to get in early decision. Yes, there is a higher admit rate for the early pool, but in terms of competitiveness, academically, socially, diversity, all those different things, the students we are admitting in early look exactly like the students we are admitting in regular. So it's not necessarily easier. Yes, there's a smaller number of students applying, but the majority are still not getting in. Um, so with that in mind, one of the big drivers in determining do you apply ED versus RD comes down to financial aid. All right, what's it gonna cost you if you're gonna put all your chips on the table um, to apply to a school early decision? So at Northwestern, we only offer need-based financial aid. Given the academic caliber of the students that are applying and are being admitted to Northwestern, it gets a little political for us to determine who deserves what merit-based aid. So therefore, we've really set aside our financial aid resources um, to support students of all different financial backgrounds and make sure that if we admit you to Northwestern, we want to make sure that it's affordable. So again, need-based only, but we guarantee that we're going to meet 100% of your family's demonstrated need. What that means is if you take the total cost of attendance, so tuition, room, board, fees, all that jazz, and subtract your family's expected financial contribution, the EFC that's determined through the FAFSA and the CSS profile through College Board, whatever remains is going to be your demonstrated need. And we're going to cover that 100% with scholarships, grants, and work-study funding. So if you receive financial aid at Northwestern for four years and you graduate, all that good stuff, 
you're going to be able to potentially walk away debt free. All right, which is a really great offer. Um, this year alone, we set aside over $200 million in undergraduate financial aid. So we really want to make sure that if you're admitted to Northwestern, that it's going to be financially possible. To get an idea of what it would cost you and your families to attend Northwestern, I encourage you to check out our online net price calculator. This is a federally mandated tool that all colleges and universities are required to have on their websites. And it's supposed to give you a good estimate of what it would cost you to attend that school. If you go online to northwestern.edu, search for the net price calculator, it's going to bring you to a page. You're going to be asked to fill out some basic tax information, and then that's going to spit out your EFC. And that, if you filled it out correctly, should be a very good estimate of what you would be expected to pay if you were admitted to Northwestern. All right. So with that all in mind, we're going to transition here for the last 13-ish minutes. Um, thanks for bearing with me there for all that information. Um, to answer as many of these questions that you've been submitting as we can, keep submitting them. Um, we'll try to get through as many of them as possible. All right. So here we go. We got a uh, question from Quinn here um, about activism on campus, particularly in the realm of climate change. Um, so Sydney, how strong is the activist community at Northwestern? Specifically within the issue of climate change, what does that look like? I know just from my own experience, there's a lot of different student groups um, that are devoted to this, and there's some different um, larger organizations at the university. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about those right now? Yeah, thanks, Fritz. Um, so in terms of activism in general, I think during the current um, political climate, I guess you could call it, we've seen a lot of call to actions. I think my social media has been completely flooded with people who are fighting for racial rights, who are fighting um, for a bunch of different, very important issues right now. Um, and for me as a student, that's really, really inspiring is that a lot of my classmates independently and also groups on campus are taking a stand on a variety of issues. And a lot of this includes environmental because um, a lot of the issues that we're talking about right now are very intertwined. And so, uh, there are definitely a lot of ways on campus to get involved in environmental activism um, and just the environment. There's uh, academically, there's certificates and professors that really talk about it and help inspire change. Um, and right at the end of winter quarter before quarantine, um, there was a march by uh, around the South Campus um, demanding Northwestern divest from fossil fuels. And there's a lot of activism, especially um, in that sphere where students will write petitions and they'll talk to administrators. Um, one of my close friends, I talked about him, he went and studied uh, environmental science in Ecuador. He was instrumental in planning that march. And so um, I see a lot of my friends and a lot of just my peers really getting involved in not only the Evansons community, but also these like larger issues. And I think um, that's super inspiring. It's something that um, Northwestern teaches us to be independent thinkers and to apply those skills for things like that. So, um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Sydney. Um, in addition to a lot of the student groups at Northwestern, um, I would encourage you, Quinn, to take a look at the Institute for Sustainability and Energy at Northwestern. It's a phenomenal group that's really looking at um, how we can really apply more green practices, um, not only as a university, but also as a city, state, country, and world. A lot of great research going on there. And um, to Sydney's point earlier, um, there's a lot of research funding. I know um, a buddy and I actually um, pursued a undergraduate research project that took us to Trinidad and Tobago in investigating environmental environmental degradation um, for a summer. It was not just a Caribbean vacation. I can promise you that. I wanted there to be a beach day. We did not get a beach day, uh, much to my chagrin. Um, so definitely a lot of opportunities for activism, for research, and for making change at Northwestern. Um, all right, next question from Jonah here. What are common characteristics of Northwestern students? I know for me, I think um, the one word that always pops to my head is supportive. Um, I always think one of the really differentiating factors about Northwestern, Jonah, and for everyone else listening, um, is the fact that given the diverse opportunities in the social experience that we have at Northwestern, 
it's incredible to see students from such different walks of life coming out and supporting one another. So um, we actually have like 14 or 15 different acapella groups on campus. Those students will absolutely be at the football stadium on Saturdays cheering on the Wildcats as they partake in Big Ten and non-conference play. That being said, those same athletes will be supporting those acapella students at their concerts, showing up for different performances around campus throughout the year as well. There's a lot of buy-in and a lot of engagement um, in really supporting one another. And I think that makes the Northwestern community pretty special. Is there anything you wanna to add to that, Sydney? Yeah, um, I completely agree with what Fritz said. And I would add that a word I used before was passionate. And I think it really shows um that people can be so passionate about other things but still so intrigued by what other people are passionate passionate about and i really think it speaks to what fritz was saying that um we'll support each other in all different walks of life because everyone's so excited um to listen to your passions and also for you to listen to theirs and so it builds this really strong community of people who are really interested in a bunch of different things and supporting each other fantastic all right, so another question that we seem to be getting a bit about um, is kind of what are the differences between Evanston and Chicago? What are the benefits um, of being in Evanston versus Chicago? Do you want to touch on that, Sydney, a little bit? Yeah, um, I started to talk about it a little bit before. Um, and so, like I said, like being in Evanston is sort of this nice little removal from the uh, bustling city but it's also not too far removed that you can't get there um, by our shuttle bus system we have an inter-campus bus that takes you right around um, the northwestern medical and law campus uh, that's right also by the milwaukee contemporary or the museum of contemporary art um, one of my favorite places to go so it's very convenient it's free for northwestern students very easy to get there um, as well as the l which is our train system um, so you sort of get the best of both worlds you get to be right by this big city that's a cultural hub that has things going on all the time, like amazing nightlife, amazing food, amazing cultural experiences. And then you also get um, your quiet little suburb uh, right on the lake, very beautiful. And kind of, for me, it's like centering that I can go and like exist in a big city and then also like kind of return to my academics, it feels like. So that's sort of been my experience with Evanston in Chicago. I know you've been here too so what do you what do you think about it yeah i definitely think that evanston has far more of a college town feel to it than necessarily chicago does because northwestern is kind of the focus for evanston um versus if northwestern were just in downtown chicago it would be one of many other things going on so you wouldn't get necessarily um as many perks. I mean, there's a ton of um, restaurants and shops right there in Evanston where you're going to be able to use that wild card discount um, when you're on campus living, learning, experiencing um, college life. Um, that's pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of great um, places to live off campus. If if you decide to move off campus after your second year. Um, and for me, it was just kind of a nice way to bridge um, life for me into Chicago. Um, Evanston has a very urban feel to it, um, but it's definitely not quite the same hustle and bustle as downtown Chicago in the loop. And for me, coming from my small village, it was nice starting off in Evanston and getting comfortable first on campus, then in Evanston, and then feeling like I could tackle uh, the Windy City. So that was all, um, I think, one of the great ways to take advantage of our location in that capacity. Um, all right, we're kind of getting close here to the end. So um, we got a great question here that I always love to send to the student presenter. Um, so Sydney, coming at you, what ultimately made you choose Northwestern? So, the first time I came to campus, I was with my mom. I was visiting for a soccer tournament and she thought it'd be a really good idea as a sophomore for me to see a campus. And just kind of funny that it was sort of like early in my high school career that I came here, but it was a nice day. And so that's always a good, good time to come to campus. But we were walking along the lake and I remember just how beautiful the campus was. And we would stop and ask people like kind of questions about where we were, people like with backpacks so assuming students um and everyone was just like so nice and asked like would always be like 
oh, do you want me to like, show you anything? Do you have any other questions about school? And just sort of like that energy was really great. I signed up then to go to an information session and just um, was surrounded. My tour guide was so friendly and was an engineer. And so I got to ask her a lot of questions about what it was like to be here. And she was just so excited about everything she was doing and so excited to learn about me and just being on in a place where people are just so encouraging and so happy to get to know you and happy to be doing what they're doing is just such a draw. And I don't think I could have wanted to go anywhere more, which is very exciting for me to be here. But um, I haven't lost that feeling in four years and I've graduated. And I'm just so, so thankful to have met the kind of people I anticipated to meet here from those experiences. So that's my why Northwestern. Fabulous. Thank you, Sydney, for that. Um, I kind of had a different um, journey to Northwestern, if I'm being quite honest. I grew up thinking I wanted to go into journalism and knew Northwestern had a really strong program. And I remember visiting um, in the summer and immediately being turned off. I did not have a good visit to campus and really was rethinking um, whether or not this was the right school for me. Um, so I continued to like explore different options, visited different campuses, and ultimately what really won me over um, was not only coming back for the admitted student days that we host in the spring, but during that time, I was able to, you know, really reflect on how I wanted to grow as an individual. And I knew Northwestern was going to push me outside of my comfort zone. And I really encourage you all, as you think about where you want to go to school, to think about wh what you're comfortable with right now. And to think about in what ways you think you can grow, how you can check your ego, get curious, think critically, and really open yourself up to new possibilities and what campuses really allow you to do that. Um, I think, you know, that first visit to Northwestern kind of was a weird gut check for me that because I was a little bit on the younger side, I was only a rising junior at the time. I was an eager beaver back in the day um, for any of you rising juniors out there as well. Um, but by the time I got around to my senior year, I was really thinking about what college was going to mean for me and having that another year of maturity under my belt um, really allowed me to reconsider and take a chance on Northwestern, and I have not regretted it a day since. Um, so with that in mind, um, Sydney, is there any parting words you want to offer before we sign off here tonight? Go Cats, it'll be the best decision you make. Perfect. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Um, I wish you and your families good health. Um, again, do not feel like you cannot reach out to us. We are here to answer your questions. So email our office um, with anything that maybe I didn't get to tonight. Um, engage with us on social media. We have a ton of different platforms, including this YouTube channel that has a lot of phenomenal um, information um, right here for you guys to check out during your free time this summer and going into the fall, depending on when we're able to reopen or not. This is going to be a really great spot for you to learn more about Northwestern and about our admissions process. Um, additionally, now that you've done the information session, be sure to check out um, upcoming other virtual programming, including a tour, um, I believe Wednesday night, and we have a student Q&A panel. So if you have more questions um, about what it's like to be a student at Northwestern, be sure to join us back tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m., I believe, Central Standard Time. Um, and you'll be able to interact with more undergraduate students about what it's like um, to be a wildcat day in and day out. Again, wish you and yours good health. Thank you for joining us tonight. Be well, be safe, be yourselves, and go Cats. <laughs>